Hi, Mikael. Hi. Um, just before I start, could you could you clarify who is in the leadership group at the moment and will overstay in it? Well, Oma won't be part of that uh, leadership group, and um, and I cannot tell you who is in that leadership group. No worries. And what would Oba have to do now, or, or any other player, if they were in, in, in his situation? What would he have to do to get back into your thinking for selection and to, and, and to secure his future, if you like? What steps would he have to take? Well, the decision that, um, that we have taken as a club is very clear, is because... Um, we believe that he has failed uh, to be committed at the level that uh, we all expect and agreed. So um, it's as simple as that. And you talk about that commitment. Obviously, you've been Arsenal captain. You know exactly what is required to, to lead this squad, lead a club like this. Can you, I mean, can you talk a bit about what qualities you expect an Arsenal captain, whoever that is, to have? What I expect about... Uh, any person in this football club that is representing this badge, that it's um, that is passion, that he gives absolutely the percent, that he puts the club in front of any personal interest and is able to do anything um, to fulfill the badge that we have on that chest. Apart from that, you can listen to the individuals, you can understand the different cultures, but um, but that commission, that passion has to be there and. Um, and unfortunately, it wasn't. It seems like we've been here quite a few times now um, for, um, for different reasons and with, and with, and with the captains. Obviously, there were situations before with Kashoni, with Granite, now we're over. Now, that's for a lot of different reasons, and you weren't here for all of them. But um, why, why do you think it is that this keeps happening at Arsenal and to Arsenal captains? Is it because the club's had all that instability in, in the past few years and it's not quite got rid of it? Well, I'm talking today about the incident that uh, that happened today, and I think it's more than enough to talk and discuss only that matter. Okay, and just um, just one more. Like, I mean, we're here again talking about an, an off the pitch matter, and you have done so much work in the past two years to maybe change that at Arsenal and get the culture right and stop those off pitch problems. But we're back here again. Is that exasperating for you? Nick, I'm here to make the right decision every day, again, to defend the club and to be consistent in something that we want to do it on and off the field. We have to be consistent with our decision making. And if that's the case, unfortunately, is the situation that we have today. Okay, thank you, Mikael. Thank you. Okay. Neil? Yeah, good afternoon, Mikael. Right. Just like to you, you mentioned earlier what a good relationship you've had or have with Aubameyang. I'd just like to ask how you feel personally to have to do this. Do you feel let down? I feel really sad. Um, I wouldn't like to be in this position, um, not with him, with any player to make uh, these kind of decisions. Um, because at the end, the formula of a coach is when you're trying to help a player to become a better person, um, to be happy, to be fulfilled as a, as a player and to enjoy on that pitch. And at the moment with that decision, Oba is not going to be able to do that. So for me, it's just um, sadness. Do you feel he's let the club down? We have made a decision because we believe that um, um, is the best thing right now to do, and um, and that's it. And there's no point of uh, going any further than that. Just ask you: did, did, did you seek advice from people inside the club or even outside the club before making a decision, which is you know which is a big decision for, for yourself and the club? Yeah, that's why we have made a decision as a club. Um, after a lot of conversations and a lot of thought, but just with one intention, is try to protect the club and uh, and try to do the best thing to defend as well our people, our players, and get the best performance on that pitch, which is what we're here for. The, the Mesut Ozil was mentioned earlier on. Do you think there's a danger of Aubameyang becoming the new Mesut Ozil, who became an expensive embarrassment to the club? And, um, and, and will your experience with him, how will that experience with him prevent that happening again? The decision is clear and it's um, after a lot of thought and uh, and after a series of things that happened and um, and it was necessary, whether we like it or not. Yeah, just finally from me, that you've worked hard on the culture of the club. Do you think, is this a, do you think you've made, you've had made huge progress? Does this come as a surprise to you? 
for the, 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 this, this incident? And do you think you've got the characters in the dressing room to behave and create, create a culture that you are looking to create at Arsenal? We have come very, very far, and you can only see that probably when you are around here, but you can see as well the energy and togetherness around that team when they play together. But um, it's still not there. And uh, we had another incident and that reflects that we are still not there. But that's why it's, um, it's about the light rain. To get really wet, you need every day, every single day. And, um, and that was another one. I mean, so just finally, management's not an easy job. Do you find this the most difficult part? Of it, but aside from the tactical side, that's all the all demands of a Premier League manager, the man management. And do you find it? Do you find that difficult? Yes, because the the best thing is when you can make uh, people's life better, and with your capacity to make big decisions, whether it is a a member of um, one of the departments or whether it is a player, is uh, to to try to help him um, to have a better life, to be happier. Uh, to conquer more things but um, but as well at the end you have to defend the collective and the club and in order to do that you have to make bold decisions that uh, that you think that um, they're going to help the rest of the of the club thanks Neil. hi Mikael. hi um, I, I remember last time when pierre was dropped from the team i was speaking to, to david moyes and he was praising you and saying you know where do you think Mikael learned this idea of you know non-negotiables and discipline I just wondered where that came from and was it something you learned from David? Was it your time at La Masia or where your sort of man management philosophy is really born out of? First of all is the way I was raised um, with my parents and, um, and my family entourage. Then it's experiences that I had in life, obviously throughout um, my life and my career as a player with, with different managers and people that I admire. And, um, and this is with my beliefs and thankfully my beliefs and my values are completely shared with the with the club values that's why i decided as well to to belong here and um and take the step to become the manager here because i believe that i could represent them so what i cannot do it's um it's failed to that um because then it wouldn't be me mm. and and your, your predecessor here Unai, and i think pep might have done it at city as well when they were picking the captain, they held like a vote among the squad. I don't know if when eventually you come to pick a successor, you will have a vote with the squad, or is it a decision you will take who is the next Arsenal captain? There are so many different ways to do it. Uh, sometimes the manager can decide the captain or can decide the second or third captain, and the group has to defend who is going to represent them in, in that dressing room. They are good. And um, and they can all work. Uh, you have the right people. So you wouldn't be opposed to, to having a vote. Well, I've seen and I have participated on on both of them. And uh, at the end, the important is not uh, the journey or the destination. The important is the company. That's the most important thing. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.